Exercise 13.3, Uncertain Future Cash Flows, Learning Objective 3. Hanover Industries is investigating purchasing automated equipment that would save $100,000 each year in direct labor and inventory carrying costs. The equipment costs $750,000 and is expected to have a 10-year useful life with no salvage value. The company requires a minimum 15% rate of return on all equipment purchases. This equipment would provide intangible benefits such as greater flexibility and higher quality output that are difficult to estimate and yet are quite significant. Required, what dollar value per year would the intangible benefits have to be worth to make the equipment an acceptable investment? So clearly we're going to find that we have negative net present value, otherwise we wouldn't be asking that question, right? Well, what is our negative net present value? We need that to figure out what the payments are. So let's start there. Step one. Step number one. We're going to calculate a net present value. How do I like to do this? Well, you know what I like to do. I get my timeline up so that I can tell the story. I am going to spend $750,000 today. I'm going to, the investment's going to last 10 years. I want a required rate of return equal to 15%. And this investment is going to generate cash flows of $100,000 a year for 10 years with zero salvage value. That's all I need to know. There's my timeline. Let's solve it in Excel first. Again, I'm not going to use Excel. I'm just going to show you what I would do. In the first cell, I would hit equals negative 750. There's my initial investment. Then I want the, the present value of all my uh, cash flows equals NPV. What do I have? I have 0.15 uh, and I have $100,000 for 10 years. Once I hit enter, I can hit sum, and I would get negative 248,123. So I know I have an, a negative NPV, but I need that. I need that. This negative NPV is the sum of these two, by the way. I need that to figure out, well, now, how much, if, if, if these $100,000 cash flows were increased each year, how much would they have to be increased by for this to be zero? So how would we solve this same problem instead of going to Excel? How would we solve it with a calculator? Because on an exam, you may have to solve this with a calculator and you won't have Excel with you. So let's find out. We want to get the same answer. So what we have, we have two things. We have our negative 750 minus the present value of, it looks like a bond to me, with n equals to 10, a future value equal to 0, uh, a i, my discount rate equal to 15, and my payment equal to 100,000. Now I just need to compute present value, and I will get negative 501.877. So that my net present value would be 501.877 minus the $750,000 that I'm paying. What will I get here? Lo and behold, negative 248.123, which is what we get with Excel. So there we go. So now that we have our net present value, we're in a position to answer the question of what the increment in the cash flow needs to be to make our net present value equal zero. So let's be clear what we're doing. Step number two, we want to find, and in calculator speak, we want to find PMT. Not only just in calculator speak, but guess what? PMT is a function in Excel. We've already seen that, such that our net present value equals zero. So let's figure out what we need on the calculator. Our present value is negative 248, 123. We know that our IY is still 15. Our N is 10. Our future value is still zero. And now we want to compute PMT. And when we compute PMT, we will get 49,439. And if you use Excel, you'll find that if you hit equals PMT, it's going to ask you for exactly these variables. It's going to ask you for the rate. There's 15. It's going to ask you for the number of periods, 10. It's going to ask you for the present value, which is 248. Ask you for the future value. And then it's going to have a, either a 0 or a 1 at the end. 
zero meaning a ordinary annuity, one meaning an annuity due. It'll default to ordinary annuity, and it'll return 49,439. You can use Excel, or you can use a calculator. You'll find that for all the problems, I'm going to just use a calculator because, like I said, there's no point dragging out a heavy big computer to solve a problem when a little handheld calculator can do just as well. Exercise 13.4, Preference Ranking. Information on three potential projects is given below, and we have them here, and I've just replicated what's in the book. A, B, and C, the investment required for each, the present value of the cash in for each, and the net present value of each one. You'll notice that the net present value is just uh, our, our present value of cash in minus the investment required in each case. Required, number one, compute the project profitability index for each project. All right, so we need the project profitability index bear with me here and what was it it was net present value over the investment required so what do we have in a we will get 59.5 K over 170 K which will give us 35 percent for project B, our net present value is 104.5. The investment required is 190. That will give us 55%. And for C, it was 110 over. The required is 220. Will give us 50%. You can see this is rather juvenile stuff, right? So now we need to rank them. Well, one, two, three. I mean, that wasn't difficult at all, right? Number two, rank the projects in terms of preference we just did. So there we go. Um, that actually was rather simple. In fact, it was a little too simple, I think. But uh, hey, you know, there it is.